Let's start with those planned protests on October 7. Opposition leader Peter Dutton has criticised Victorian Premier Jacinta Allen for her government's weak response to these anti-Israeli agitators. And he pointed out that the Labor government was more than willing to stamp out protests during the COVID era. I think the Premier is at odds with the majority of Victorians who would not support the celebration of death. So what is the justification for the Premier here not to do everything at her disposal to stop these protests from taking place? She was part of a government uh, that deployed the police force here in Victoria during the course of COVID to enforce the rule of law. And I think the Victorian Labor Party should have the same uh, resolve in relation to this issue. If there is a will, there is a way to stop these protests. Let's bring in Nick Cater now, Senior Fellow at the Menzies Research Centre and a columnist with the Australian newspaper. Nick, Peter Dutton makes a fair point there. I can't imagine how devastating it would be for members of the Jewish community to deal with protests on October 7, on the first anniversary of what was the biggest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. Yeah, exactly. It's a very, a very sad day, Rita. I've been anticipating this day for some time, knowing we'd get to that anniversary and we'd have to look back and think about those horrible events, the most uh, devastating attack on Jewish people since the Holocaust. The thought that anybody would be on the streets protesting against Israel and in favour of those Hamas terrorists and indeed the Hezbollah terrorist uh, organisation as well is just chilling. I, I just don't know what gets into people. And I know that every right-minded Australian, whatever they feel about the Middle East, will be sympathising with the Jewish community on Monday who have suffered, suffered a grie grievous loss. And uh, what Jacinta Allen is doing, once again, she's siding with the extremists on the fringe and uh, she's not uh, supporting everyday Victorians who want to be, be able to go about their business and take to the streets if they so choose to, to mourn and to share those memories together. It is deeply sickening. But finally, I'll just say this, reader, on this topic. I thought people like Jacinta Allen were supposed to be in favour of peaceful multiculturalism. Whatever happened to that idea that we could all just get along and put our differences aside and all be, you know, on the same side? You know, that's what multiculturalism is surely about. But this is a horrible phenomenon, the rise of this uh, anti-Semitism and pro-terrorist sentiment, which is just fueling anger and making Australian streets a very uncomfortable place to be for people from the Jewish community. Well, in Sydney, the uh, planned pro-Palestinian anti-Israeli protest is going to go ahead um, despite police applying to the New South Wales Supreme Court to stop the event. Nick, at least New South Wales has a permit system. There's nothing of the sort here in Victoria. And the leftist activists are loving that. They proudly call Melbourne the protest capital of Australia. Yes, indeed. But look, I mean, this is a chance for the New South Wales police to redeem themselves after that appalling incident last year on October the 9th. We've got to remember those October 9th demonstrations at the Sydney Opera House were not authorised, Rita. They just chose to march on mm. down towards the Opera House and the police were, were too uh, weak to stop them. I just hope that the police are ready for a, a, a proper uh, exercise in strong policing this time and aren't going to take that lenient view they did on October 9th. We'll all be watching. This is their chance to prove that they, they can keep the peace without fear or favour. Uh, and I think what the New South mm. Wales police do on Monday will be very critical. Well, yeah, we can't allow mob rule, and that's what's been happening, it seems, that yeah. the police force is uh, trying to appease those that they fear are going to become agitated and violent if, if they try to stop them doing whatever it is they're doing. Now, in a further sign of the growing frustration of the Australian business community with the Albanese government, the Business Council of Australia has lashed proposed industrial relation changes from one of Australia's largest unions, with the group's chief executive saying that implementing the ACTU's plans would, and I quote, take a sledgehammer to the economy by adding cost and complexity for businesses at the worst possible time while not improving productivity. Nick, again, this is a huge departure from the way some in big, big, big business held hands with 
Sally McManus and the ACTU, you'll remember that uh, job summit where they were thinking they were all going to come out winners and, and the Business Council of Australia, I think at the time, got played badly. Is big business finally waking up? Yeah, look, sitting, it turns out sitting around the campfire singing Kumbaya and holding hands doesn't work. They should have known that, of course, but, you know, I suppose they, they had a go at trying to do things the nice way. But, look, the Albanese government has just done... Well, since it came into government, it's been doing, you know, making up for the favours. The union movement has done it and making, paying back the debt to the union movement, which gives, you know, millions of dollars to the Labour Party, as we know, by making the the laws once again in favour of the unions, the big unions who just take the public for granted and just, just go out, they're out for themselves. So I'm glad the uh, the BCA and the Mining Council, incidentally, uh, the, the, the Minerals Council have woken up to this now because you know we really have mm. to resist this anti-government it's anti sorry this anti-business government which has come in pr pr with no idea how the real economy works and is making life very very hard for ordinary australians now just before you go uh we're hearing that senator fatima payman who was a labor senator and then quit the party to become an independent. She's apparently only weeks away from launching her own political party. She's got help now. Her new chief of staff is the preference whisperer, Glenn Drury. Uh, does that mean she's going to succeed? Because he has been remarkably successful in the past in um, having uh, candidates with very small number of votes win seats. Well, you wouldn't be surprised. You look at some of the... Uh... The riffraff that ends up in the Senate, Rita, under different party banners <laughs> through this preference system, it, it, it happens, right? But I think what worries me about Senator Payman's idea of what a party should be, I mean, sure, she's free to set up her own party, more the merrier, I say. But if she's going to build her party around Islamism, then that's deeply troubling. We've never before in Australia had a political yes. party built around a religion or a faith. That's a development which none of us want to see. We like to think that uh, politics is politics, faith is another thing. And uh, if they're going to turn this into a party that's defined by the Islamic religion, that is extremely troubling and we should all be worried about that. Nikita, thank you for your time this evening.